Let's quickly look at the possible ways in which we can be able to diagnose what um, cholangitis. Okay, so diagnosis of what cholangitis. And before you can look at the possible ways to diagnose cholangitis, there are some things that you should know. First of all, you should know what is cholangitis. Now, look at the picture of a normal bile duct. Okay, then look at the picture of an inflamed bile duct. Okay, so cholangitis simply means what? There's an inflammation of the bile duct. Okay, so in cholangitis now, diagnosing this disease condition, that's after you're taking history of the patient, you have done physical examination, and you're kind of like suspecting that, okay, the bile ducts have a problem. No, it could be that the gallbladder has a problem. No, it could be that it's the liver that has a problem. No, it could be that it's the pancreas that has a problem. So you actually need to bring in these diagnostic modalities just to confirm your diagnosis, okay? So for cholangitis, there are some couple of things you want to do, and these are the things I will be looking at, all right? So um, we said that cholangitis is actually a bacterial infection of the bile duct. Not really only back, uh, bacteria, right? But bacteria are kind of like the most common. But it could be that gallstones from the gallbladder came in to block the bile duct. It could be that there was a trauma directly to it and all the stuff, okay? So its diagnosis involves a combination of what? Clinical evaluations, laboratory tests, and imaging studies, all right? So here's a step-to-step -step approach to us trying to diagnose cholangitis. Uh, clinical evaluation. Um, you can access for the symptoms, like... Look at the level of the fever, level of the abdominal pain, level of the jaundice. And when you have fever, abdominal pain, and jaundice, together that's what is known as what? The charcoal triad. So it starts suspecting what? Inflammations already, okay? Then if there's a tea-colored urine, okay, you are now suspecting bilirubin, right? Then you look at the medical history of the patients too. All right, that's under clinical evaluation. So you, you ask the patients, like, have they ever had any biliary tract surgery? Have they ever gone to any other hospital and they told them that they have gallstones? Just ask them some funny questions, right? They still ask the patient, have they ever had any liver disease in their life? Then after the clinical evaluations, at least you have gathered, like, what, 60% information. You are left with, like, 40% information. Now, that 40% information is kind of, like, crazy. All right, kind of like you must actually have it if you want to do a good diagnosis. All right, so in that laboratory test, you opt in for complete blood count that's a CBC, and um, when you do it, you see that there's an elevated leukocyte that's leukocytosis, or you could say with a left shift with what immature bands. Okay, that's what our professor always say. So you can also do some liver function tests like. Um, yeah, liver function test. When you do it, you see that if the person has cholangitis at all, there will be elevated bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase will go up, and transaminases will go up, all right? Then you can also do some blood cultures. That's if you're suspecting that it's a bacterial infection, of course. Some of those bacteria will be in the some of those bacteria will be in the blood, all right? So you could do some blood cultures just to check if there's any bacteria in the blood, all right? So, we spoke about the charcoal triad, okay? Then, um, you could opt in for imaging studies just to look at the internal environment of the person to confirm if there's cholangitis and to confirm if there is any what spread to neighboring structures, all right? So, you could do imaging studies like ultrasound to visualize the bile duct and dictate if there's dilatation or obstruction. You could do the CT scan as computed tomography to evaluate the liver, the bile duct, and the surrounding tissues, you could do magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography to visualize the bile duct and what? Pancreatic duct, okay? Then uh, you could do some endoscopic retrograde, what? Cholangiopancreatography. This one is to visualize the bile duct and take a biopsy uh, or to perform a therapeutic, what? Intervention. If there are some anti-inflammatory stuff that you want to put there, you could do this um, endoscopic word, way. 
They're talking about the diagnostic criteria. There's a charcoal triad that involves the patient must have fever, jaundice, and right upper quadrant abdominal pain. All right. Then we have the Reynolds pentad. Reynolds pentad is like what? You have charcoal triad, okay? But you now see add what? Hypotension or shock. They see add what? Confusion or altered mental status to it, okay? Then differential diagnosis. Um, you are doing all this just to rule out other causes of jaundice, abdominal pain, such as hepatitis, gallstones, or pancreatic disease. Okay, so that's it about what diagnosis of what cholangitis. Um, or use a step by step approach to diagnosing what um, cholangitis. Okay, so guys, that's it. Hey, bye for now.